Welcome back then to Foots Lane and uh, we're just getting ready to see our second match here on Pitch 2 this afternoon. I'm Simon Delarue with your commentary on these matches and Miles Plumley is beside me uh, behind the camera. And the next match on our menu today is Guernsey men over 50s in blue against the England women over 40s in red. A rare team sport matchup in international sport between a team of women and a team of men. So the Guernsey men over 50s, we have uh, Richard Eberl in goal. We've got Jason Eustace, John Gallian, Phil Thacker, Steve Fallais, Rick Batiste, Simon Nelson, Brian Shepard, Miguel Pires, Jake Hill, Darcy Nicole, Rick, uh, Robin Rebilliard and Adrian Duport are uh, the squad. And the England women over 40s squad is uh, Amanda Thompson in goal, Kelly O'Donnell, Natasha Folwell, Mandy Walsh, Catherine Bradley, Heidi James, Catherine Critchell and Lorraine Robinson. So it's uh, Duport with the ball there back to uh, Eberl in the Guernsey goal. And uh, a long ball forward uh, but hit far too hard by Eberl and it's all the way through for uh, Thompson in the Guernsey in the England goal beg your pardon and so uh, number two there is Critchell with the ball forward and uh, Stuart Langworthy has uh, gone back down to uh, pitch level uh, but I'm joined by one of his colleagues here from the uh, WFA would you like to introduce yourself and uh, say a few words about this second match here Yes, I, I, hello everyone, I'm Paul Carr, I'm the founder and chief executive of the Walking Football Association in England. Uh, we set it up four years ago, uh, actually five years ago now, and started the, the England set up um, in 2018. And um, this, is, this is as the result of what we've done over the last three years. We've now got eight England teams, five of which are, are over here in, in beautiful Guernsey. And you were telling me uh, earlier on just about the rarity of seeing a, a, a team of women taking on a team of men in international sport. Uh, how rare exactly is it? Well, we couldn't find any sport uh, where it's happened before. Uh, obviously, there's things like mixed doubles in, in tennis, badminton, etc. But in, in any t competitive team sport, it's always the men against the men and the women against the women. So, so we, we, we did this for the first time last, last week at St George's Park uh, with the England teams, play, uh, men in England playing against the women in England. And this is the first time that we've, we're obviously including a, an overseas country as well to, to do this rather unusual exercise. of, uh, As it's a non-contact sport, there's no reason at all why men can't play against the women. Simple as that. Yeah, it certainly lends itself to that kind of uh, competition. Um, are there any thoughts about creating mixed teams? Uh, uh, any age group, do you think? Or is the, uh, you, would you prefer to keep sort of men's teams and women's teams separate? Well, certainly at club level, uh, there are lots of mixed mix games going on and some of the players here today, or in fact quite a few of the players here today, would be used to playing mixed gender matches at their clubs. Uh, I think it might happen. Um, at the moment, I think the women are quite happy to keep to themselves and the men seem quite happy to keep to themselves. So it depends how it progresses. At the moment, this is all very new for everybody because... Uh, as I say, normally the men are used to playing against the men, etc. So it may happen uh, as the game progresses. And the game's only 10 years old, sport's only 10 years old, so we're evolving all the time. And if, that's, if there's a d demand, we'll do it, which is why we've ended up with 18 teams, because there was a demand for an over 60s women team and an over 75s England team. So we've done it because there were enough people wanting to get involved. Well, when, you, when you think about the controversies uh, of um, Casta Semania and Olympic controversies over gender issues, to be potentially the first sport that is entirely ungendered could be uh, a, a, something that you could be pioneers in in this form of the sport. Definitely. I mean, our, our event last week at St George's Park was supported by Kick It Out because they're not just racial discrimination, they're all about gender discrimination as well. And for us to say, you know, we're happy for our women's team to play against the men's team. Is, is part of that all-inclusivity that we were trying to promote in the sport. Uh, everybody can play, that's why we have the age group so that it's safe for the 50-year-olds, you're not playing a 50-year-old against an 70-year-old, an 
uh, you know, it's, it's important to keep the ages at this level separate from a safety point of view. But, you know, in terms of the gender, I don't think it makes any difference. And, and we'll see today, I think the women will, will certainly do very well. And uh, you won't necessarily, if you didn't know, you wouldn't necessarily know that you were looking at a, a mixed intergender match. Indeed, well, uh, the, we've uh, seen a fair amount of uh, energetic action in this game so far. Paul, thanks very much for your thoughts on that. And uh, we'll uh, see how they fare then, these Guernsey o men's over 50s against the England women over 40s. And a decent chance here for England. Slightly scuffed shot there from Kelly O'Donnell. Uh, she plays for Birmingham. Um, again, another uh, England team made up of uh, players from all around the land. Uh, Thompson in goal. Uh, plays uh, football for Newcastle. Kenley O'Donnell there, I mentioned, uh, from Birmingham. Lorraine Robinson in the squad is also uh, a representative from Birmingham. And uh, I'll just pause there because uh, England on the attack. Looking for uh, options to go forward. That's uh, Natasha Folwell of Bedford on the ball. That's cut out well there by the Guernsey number five. That's Hill. Plays it inside. Uh, but, uh, again, I think we saw this in the first match here, the Guernsey squad having fewer options when they get the ball. Not quite as much movement uh, going forward. And in the end, uh, Duport loses, uh, loses possession to his uh, England opponents and England on the attack once more. Uh, referee Bisson blows up there and uh, he's held a finger up to the... Uh, the bench, it's an England free kick. They get things going once more. Oh, and a strong shot, but uh, Eberl's well on top of that. So 0-0 nil -nil here in this second match on pitch two in this walking football tournament. And Hill on the ball now for Guernsey. And a ball there for Duport. I think he just clipped the bar there. Uh, or the post, I should say. Uh, met it well but didn't quite keep it on target and so uh, England survived that early scare number 10 Folwell back to Critchell and some crisp uh, passing and movement here from Guernsey but uh, unable to retain possession there and it's back to the keeper from Eustace forward to Hill once more seems to be the go-to pass for Eberl thus far and Hill again collects it down wide. Oh, there's a decent ball in there. And, uh, well, the shot was on target, but without a great deal of force behind it. And so uh, the shot from Nelson is easily dealt with by Thompson. Richel on the ball now. That's an, an overzealous... Uh, oh, well, there I thought that the uh, decision had gone against Guernsey for the tackle coming in from the side, but it's gone uh, England's way instead. Hill on the ball again for Guernsey. Goes for the shot, but it's uh, too easily read. And another shot comes in, it'll be a corner to Guernsey. And what sort of challenges are faced by the referees in, in these matches then, Paul, um, compared to those that we see on our TVs with the ordinary uh, football? There's a, a whole different set of um, decision-making uh, conundrums for them. There is. Uh, in many ways, we've tried to keep the sport as simple as possible with the laws of the game, so there's no offside to worry about from the start. Uh, but the, the, the biggest problem is, is the running side and, and making sure that everybody is walking. Uh, and I think that's the major decision-making issue for any referee here. Uh, there's less in terms of contact, so you don't really get a great deal of physical uh, fouls or infringements because there is no contact. Uh, there will be accidental contact, but uh, and, and it clearly you've got usual things like handballs and uh, uh, above head height, etc. But they're normally quite straightforward. So the major one is is really uh, running, and you get some players who find it very difficult not to to walk uh, and you know gradually they will adapt to the sport and, and uh, eventually as the years go by we'll end up with a sport that has 
uh, very little running, but as in any sport, you do get infringements. You know, you get offsides, you get fouls, um, and every player isn't always going to comply with the laws of the game every single time he plays. You were saying to me earlier that uh, technology might uh, help out the referees when it comes to that whole issue of running. Yeah, there's, there's certainly uh, some research going on at the moment, which I'm aware of, where the, uh, the development of a, a post. Just to interrupt you there, it's a shot from England, so oh, it's just wide. Uh, I thought perhaps we might see our opening goal in this match, but Bradley's just shot wide of Guernsey's goal there. Yeah, there's some research going on where the, possibly you could get a, a pair of football boots that would light up uh, to show that both boots were off the ground at the same time or one, uh, one boot was not on the ground, uh, i.e. to indicate to the referee that that person was running. So uh, the technology is probably already there. It's just a question of getting it to a low-cost position where everybody could actually afford to buy those boots. If that was the case, then obviously there'd be very little dispute because uh, at the moment there are obviously different opinions about what is a run, what's a jog, what's a walk or a fast walk. And so the thoughts there of Paul Carr, the CEO of the uh, Walking Football Association. And uh, we have in this second match yet to see a goal scored, so it's still nil-nil between Guernsey men's over 50s and the England women's over 40s. Hill is on the ball now. And that's uh, forward to Eustace. He can't quite find uh, the ball through to the Guernsey forward. And so Thompson has it in the England goal. So out to Critchell, who very much seems the, uh, the playmaker at the back. James through to Folwell, back to Critchell again. And all the England and Guernsey players in Guernsey's half, but then possession is conceded by England and Guernsey try to launch a counter-attack, but it's soon snuffed out. And the shot comes in there from Bradley, but uh, it's too close to the keeper. And Ebel able to distribute. Oh, it's a wayward ball there for Guernsey, and so they've conceded possession. Nil-nil here. In this uh, pitch two at Foots Lane here in Guernsey. Bradley again on the ball. Farwell back to Critchell. Oh, the shot came in the end from Falwell, but uh, high, as indicated by referee Andy Bisson. Hill again on the ball for Guernsey, send it forward to Nelson. I think England just shading it on possession pretty much in this uh, first half so far. Almost all the Guernsey possession has been in the shape of Hill here, who has it yet again. Looking for some options and he lines up a shot but uh, not much power in that one. There were appeals for running even before he took that, but uh, nothing given. And the ball comes off Eustace, so it'll be a, an England goal kick. The ball retrieved from this uh, blue running track that was uh, just laid last year. Relayed, I should say. Well, Falwell tries to get the ball forward, but uh, again, intercepted by Eustace. Ricochets out for another goal kick. And uh, Andy Bisson has just halted proceedings because there's going to be an England substitution. And on to the pitch for England comes their number five. I had this in the last match. There is no number five on my team sheet, so I can't tell you who that is, unfortunately. So she should just be known as the number five. And number six is Mandy Walsh. 
of Manchester City. So Critchell for England back to the keeper. No substitutions yet for the Guernsey men's over 50s in this match. Critchell tries to get the number five moving forward, but instead it's collected by O'Donnell. If she can keep it in, which she does very well. Back to Folwell. But it's uh, not quite gathered in, and so Hill has it. Out to Eustace, back into Hill. Can he get here first? No, well, the interception there by the England defender nearly from Critchell, nearly went past their own keeper, which would have been a, an unfortunate own goal to concede under a lot of pressure. But uh, as it is, England survived that scare. And so we're still at nil-nil, forward to number five. And O'Donnell sends it forward. Is there a shooting chance here? Yes, there is, but Eberl very smartly out to smother that one. Decent goalkeeping. And Guernsey break with Hill once again. He's got Eustace in the middle, but not really in space. He's well marked. And a little one-two, or attempted one-two, doesn't quite come off. And so... It's England who have possession. Looks like there'll be a Guernsey substitution now, I think. We're seeing on the touchline there the number 21, Batiste, being ready to come on. Not quite yet. But now he's on the pitch. So Rick Batiste enters the fray with the score still at 0-0. So substitution for each side. Critchell on the ball now for England. Folwell on the ball. Skips past the challenge of Eustace. England just trying to find shooting chance there. Lots of possession, but in the end, the, uh, the shot not threatening the Guernsey goal. And uh, Paul Carr is back with me. I'm really going to test your knowledge. I know you've brought loads of teams over with you, but I've got no number five on my team sheet here. So are you able to identify the number five for England over 40s women? Yeah, that's Lorraine Robinson, who plays for Birmingham. She's just actually played in the other match for the, uh, the older group of women, the over 50s. So she's, uh, she's good enough to play for the over 40s as well as the over 50s. So I think they were one short in the, in the squad. So she's coming to do both jobs basically playing for both squads right well yeah being kept busy this afternoon certainly um so oh, i do have a lorraine robinson on my sheet in fact but it's uh, she was given the number 14 for the squad on that one that's fine uh so it's still uh nil nil and uh pretty pretty even game thus far here on pitch two guernsey with the possession here eustace on the ball now Back to Hill. Duport the sweepers in the England half. Still not all that option, that many options on. Duport perhaps for it. No, it doesn't quite gather it. And here is Duport with the shot, and it's well saved by Thompson. That's a, a well-worked opportunity. And Guernsey really feeling that they have to throw everyone forward in order to, to have the options to work a shot like that. Uh, leaving themselves possibly open to a counter-attack, but... Uh, nobody yet able to uh, break the deadlock here in this second match on pitch two. Eustace on the ball. and uh, Now that's uh, a c corner conceded there by England. And uh, as I've mentioned, Paul Carr, the CEO of Walking Football Association, is with us here today. Um, this isn't your first visit to Guernsey, is it? You came a couple of years ago uh, in rather different weather. Um, and what would you say of Guernsey Walking Football from what you observed then to what you're observing now? I, I think quite a lot has happened in two years. That The weather's certainly improved. Uh, but in terms of the number of people involved in, in Guernsey Walking Football, I think Paul and Andy and, and their colleagues have developed the the sport incredibly well uh, in Guernsey and obviously a lot more players now involved uh, of both genders which is fantastic so yeah all credit to them and it's a small island you know we, we've got a choice of 
thousands of players uh, and Guernsey obviously is somewhat limited choice because it's a much smaller island than, uh, than, than, than England is. But yeah, it's, it's been great and uh, it's, no matter what the scores are, it's, it's brilliant experience for the Guernsey girls and boys to, to play against some, some really good quality football, walking footballers. Yeah, well, they certainly look all to be enjoying themselves, as are the uh, the people here up in the Garin stand. There's a good couple of hundred here at Foots Lane enjoying this uh, walking football tournament and uh, certainly waiting to celebrate a goal in this uh, match between England and Guernsey. But uh, still, it remains nil-nil as we approach half-time. Oh, there's a, a heavy fall there relatively speaking for this format of the game uh, Rick Batiste tumbling over and actually hobbling away from the scene is Kelly O'Donnell a uh, bit of exuberance in that challenge do you think there Paul? I think they were both going for the ball weren't they and I think uh, it just got a bit physical accidentally I, mean, I don't think there was any, any malice in there so England got a free kick for it though yeah, and so uh, yeah, Batiste looked to take the, the harder tumble, but O'Donnell uh, limping away from that challenge, as I say. But uh, both fully able to continue. And so we've got Folwell on the ball now for England. Was that a high ball? No, it was not given. And, uh, well, it was to Hill, who's pretty tall. Hill tries to get the ball back through to Eustace. Uh, is unable to gather it. And... Oh, Duport putting on a turn of speed there, uh, and England will have the kick in down on this near side. So Robinson on the ball now for England. England on the attack once more. Certainly getting more of the ball as this half progresses, but uh, on this occasion conceding possession. Walsh unable to keep it in. And Duport will come further forward for another Guernsey kick in. Well, it's Eustace on the ball. Duport collects that well, gets the shot in, and it's deflected, is it, off the England player for a corner? Certainly that's what Duport is claiming. But uh, Genner over on the far side is trying to get the attention of referee Andy Bisson, saying that it was high. Uh, Eustace over this ball here. So danger here for England. Flick back to Hill. Gets the shot away, well blocked by Thompson. And that'll be another Guernsey corner. Darcy Nicholl with the corner. All the way through to Hill. Eustace is there. Comes in for the shot. And it was on target, but not a great deal of power behind it. Very smartly down to it, though, was Thompson. Amanda Thompson from Newcastle. And so England will build once more from the back with their playmaker Critchell forward to Folwell. Out wide to Robinson. And Duport manages to intercept. So no shortage of action in this second match here on pitch two, but uh, still a deadlock not yet broken well there was a, a faller there obviously some contact Andy Bisson blows up and it's going to be an England free kick and Folwell out to O'Donnell has a shot and it's straight into the arms of Eberl who rolls it pretty firmly out towards Hill but uh, Andy Bisson's blown up there and that's that was a decision for running, was it? There, I, did, I, did, I didn't spot that. Uh, Paul, 
Carr still with me, the CEO of uh, Walking Football Association. Um, you must watch, obviously, a great deal of this sport. And do you, would you consider yourself more and more well trained to spot when somebody's running as time goes by? I think so. Yeah, it, it's it's not always that easy. Uh, oh, here's a shot for Robinson. Oh, okay, he's charged down. One of the hardest areas is the off the ball running, because uh, clearly the referee is, is watching where the ball is. Uh, fortunately, in these games we've got an assistant referee, so they should be helping. But you know, off the ball running is, is quite difficult to spot. It's often behind the referee's back. Oh. Uh, a very loud cheer goes up because on the other pitch, on pitch one, Guernsey have uh, equalised in that match. Uh, still went for our first goal in this particular match on this side. But uh, that roar will tell you what a decent crowd we've got in here at Foots Lane here in the Garand stand. Oh, have they taken the lead of there? Well, we're not really following that match, but you can find a stream of that one. Yeah, Paul's gone off to find out exactly what the situation is in that match. But we've reached half time then in this uh, match two on pitch two. And uh, so we've got streams of both matches uh, happening simultaneously on the uh, on this Guernsey Walking Football Club .gg website. And uh, so we'll be returning here to see if other of these teams can find the back of the net. Uh, Guernsey men over 50s against England women over 40s. Uh, we'll be back here in uh, about nine or ten minutes for the second half. So the second half begins here on pitch two at Foots Lane of this match between Guernsey men over 50s and England women over 40s. It's uh, still goalless. And we'll have uh, 25 minutes of this second half in which to see which side can open their scoring. Eberl in the Guernsey goal, who's uh, been the busier keeper. But uh, really, both of them tested with a few shots here and there. And all those shots have had either power or accuracy, but never both since uh, we remain at nil-nil. And uh, here on the ball is uh, Miguel Pires, who's a half-time substitute. O'Donnell on the ball now for England. Nice ball out wide to Folwell. And uh, she gets the shot away. Uh, I think I was going over, and Eberl gathers anyway. So Guernsey, who've made a few changes at half-time. John Gallion, there the number eight, is uh, <laughs> done for running. Uh, a very clear case of running there. Robin Rebillia, the number 19, has also come onto the pitch, as well as Pires. So, uh, wholesale changes there for Guernsey, pretty much. We've got Brian Shepherd wearing the cap, who's come on as well. So, everyone being given a chance to uh, show what they can do up against these international opponents here this afternoon. And the others being given a rest, probably just as importantly. Fewer changes for England. Certainly uh, the playmaker at the back, Critchell and Thompson, who uh, have passed to each other more, more than any other pair in the England team, I would think, because they're uh, always looking for options to spread the ball out from the back. And here is O'Donnell now on the ball. England coming forward. And, uh, well, a bit of a shot from distance there from Natasha Folwell. Well, again, and uh, that shot is very quickly charged down by the number 18 Pires. But, uh, got a whistle there from referee Andy Bisson for a uh, uh, Guernsey free kick. And Eberl once again distributes charge down immediately. Uh, that'll be another goal kick for Guernsey. So Guernsey looking for their first victory in uh, any of these matches so far. So they have a reasonable opportunity here with uh, no goal against them as yet. I believe Guernsey are 2-1 down in the match on pitch one at the moment. And of course they lost 4-1 here in the match that took place earlier. So Folwell 
nifty footwork work, trying to get the ball forward to O'Donnell, which he does effectively. And O'Donnell tries to find a ball through there, ends up with a shot, and uh, Eberl smartly down to smother that one. It's going to take a very good shot, I think, to get past Eberl. At the moment, he's uh, keeping with lots of confidence. Very smart reaction saves we've seen from him so far. So Richard Eberl, it is again on the ball. Sends a ball right forward, but uh, good defending there from the England number eight, Heidi James. Uh, another Manchester City representative is Folwell, plays for Bedford. The ball forward here is for O'Donnell once again. And uh, showed a decent turn of speed to get round the defenders there. Got the shot away, but again, Eberl, will, Eberl stands in the way. And then we've got a high ball there from a shot from Critchell. And uh, referee Andy Bisson lets that one go. Ball hasn't quite reached the keeper's area so unable to collect and so it's Folwell again on the ball for England oh, that's good work there from O'Donnell but she's unable to get a shot away then Eberl managed to time that wrongly he collected the ball after it had rolled back out of his area and uh, so Jenner on the, with his flag on the far side has immediately flagged that to referee Andy Bisson he's coming over to find out some more information from his assistant. And so it's going to be an England penalty. So a chance here for Folwell. Natasha Folwell to open the scoring. Can Eberl make amends? Oh, it's against the bar. And uh, a flag waving there. Well, Jenna... Again, I should say, on the far side, is saying that is advising referee Andy Bisson that this one needs to be taken again. I couldn't hear from here what his argument was, whether a player had come forward and infringed or whether Eberl had come off his line. But uh, the second attempt is saved by Eberl. He really has been Guernsey's outstanding player thus far. And uh, having got Guernsey in trouble with that mistimed collection of the ball, as it rolled out of his area. He's got them out of trouble with a good save, but he's going to be put in service again here. I think as uh, another shooting opportunity comes, brilliant fingertip save from Everall. This is uh, a man of the match performance that we're seeing, I think, really. And <laughs> he uh, throws his arms out there as if to say to his players, well, come on, I'm, I'm making the effort. Give me some options here. Looking to find a player in space, and there's not many options. Good marking from England, but really not, not a huge amount of movement from the Guernsey contingent. Pires on the ball here now for Guernsey. And, uh, well, that ball forward has uh, gone out of play, so England will be back in possession again. They're enjoying a lot of possession in this second half. But still, for all of that, we have a score of 0-0, and it's anybody's game. Uh, O'Donnell unable to control that ball forward sufficiently and it goes high so that would be Guernsey's possession big cheer goes up for more action on pitch number one alongside us you can see uh, streamed coverage of that match as well of course as we continue to focus here on uh, Guernsey men over 50s against England men uh, England women over 40s playing in red and waiting to resume with eight minutes played now in this second half. O'Donnell once again trying to turn these defenders. Uh, ball across isn't well collected and it's uh, out of play once again. So plenty of action in the last few minutes. We've seen a penalty for England which hit the bar, had to be retaken and then brilliantly saved by Eberl making save after save in this match and another chance for O'Donnell here great turn oh and now she's worked a great shooting chance and the ball is off the post unlucky there really for England uh, well the way, the way Eberl's been playing in goal he'll say he had that covered but uh, a very close chance
for England there who are applying all the pressure. And, uh, well, the role of a goalkeeper in uh, this form of the game, every bit as important as in, in any other. And we're seeing a man of the match display from Everall here, Paul Carr. Absolutely. I mean, England suddenly uh, up, up the pace a little bit and they seem to be getting through the Guernsey defence uh, at will at the moment and the goalkeeper is definitely keeping them in the game. I think maybe we need to increase the size of the goals when we come to Guernsey. <laughs> well, Guernsey have certainly increased the size of the defenders uh, since the half-time substitutions were made and uh, they are um, doing pretty well to uh, thwart England at the moment. But really, it all comes down to Eberl, who's... Uh, just absolutely playing out of his skin at the moment and certainly enjoying himself. But I'm sure he'd like to see one of his teammates go up the other end and get a goal for Guernsey at some point. So Richard Eberl then in the Guernsey goal. Guernsey on the attack now. Bit of contact there, but uh, nothing given by referee Besson, who looks over to his assistant, Gunner, who says that's a... Uh, an England ball and that's played into Thompson and then this is Walsh now oh, there's uh, uh, another substitution we're about to see I think a couple of players perhaps coming back on for England indeed it is we're seeing uh, Bradley of Faversham coming onto the field and it looks like that's number 15 for Guernsey, Phil Facker. And he puts on the armband as we resume play here. So England immediately on the attack. Folwell trying to get through and is not a high ball forward. Well, makes no odds because it's well over hit. O'Donnell yet again. Oh, this great movement from her, but Eberl again smothers it. She finds the, gets the ball back again, and uh, in the end, Guernsey able to deal with that reasonably comfortably. Robin Rebellion passing it back to his keeper, but Guernsey just can't seem to keep the ball for very long. Here's a chance for them. And uh, there's a coming together there with a couple of players going over. Referee Bisson, what's he going to do here? So it's a free kick to Guernsey in a dangerous position. Thacker over the ball. Pires is there as well for Guernsey. Thacker's making the point that the players are a little close. So can Guernsey fashion a chance? Pires with the shot and it's deflected and very narrowly wide in the end. And uh, well, this is something that people familiar with any form of the game are aware of. If you don't take your chances when you're dominating, uh, you can very easily uh, concede and go behind. Guernsey with a corner. Thacker into Pires. Back to Thacker. Trying to find a way round Folwell. Uh, in the end, the ball comes all the way back to Rebilliard, unable to uh, control that under pressure from O'Donnell. And so it's going to be an England free kick. And we're exactly halfway through the second half and still we await the opening goal. That's despite a penalty which had to be retaken by England and saved well by Everall. Oh, that's a lovely shot there again from O'Donnell, who's very busy up front for England, but uh, narrowly wide. Piro's on the ball now for Guernsey. He's got Thacker in the middle. But a decision there. I think there's running off the ball there from Thacker, who puts his arm up in acknowledgement of it. O'Donnell on the ball yet again. Again, she works a, a chance for a shot. Lots of players around her. Folwell on the ball with the shot. Oh, and that finally has seen. Eberl beaten in the Guernsey goal. 
a really decent shot there from Folwell from some distance with her left. And so she's opened the scoring with uh, 12 minutes to go in the match. And well, with Guernsey having so little possession up until now, you wonder what sort of chance they're going to have to get back into things from here. So England over 40s women, 1-0 to the good on 38 minutes. Guernsey without a great deal of time now to find their way back into this. Uh, shot comes in, but it's rather tame. Well, I would have had my money had had you told me England were going to score on it being O'Donnell who would open the scoring because all the chances were coming through her, all the shots. But in the end, it was Folwell of Bedford who was able to finally get one past Eberl, who, I'll say it again, has been outstanding in the Guernsey goal. Without his keeping, England could have been absolutely out of sight by now. Whereas they still have an opportunity here. When I mean, you're only 1-0 down, there's still hope. And a tackle comes in there that uh, referee Bisson doesn't like, so Guernsey will have a free kick here. I think we're going to see another substitution. No, not as yet, but uh, Perez over the ball now for Guernsey then. Oh, that's a wasted free kick, really, and Folwell easily intercepts and sends it forward to O'Donnell, who's going to take another shot here. Oh, that was quite lucky there for Eberl. He got a strong hand to it, but that ricochet really could have gone anywhere. And so, uh, yeah, it's still 1-0 here uh, to England, but with all the pressure still being applied. Is this, uh, is this looking comfortable, do you think, Paul Carr? I think so. The second half has certainly been different to the first half. In England, they've created a lot of chances, and the goalkeeper's been absolutely brilliant, hasn't he? Um, poor old Kelly O'Donnell must have thought she scored a hat-trick by now, but each time he is denied. Uh, and then she's not missing chances. She's hitting target, but he's always in the way. Yeah, just uh, beaten on that one occasion from uh, a shot where he was moving in the wrong direction, and Folwell managed to uh, hit it with her left into the very top corner. Um, and that is the difference at the moment. Uh, and the difference could be so much wider without his efforts. But uh, nevertheless, England now in a very comfortable position, able to just uh, retain possession, take their time over this. Uh, they've made very few changes, or as Guernsey have made wholesale changes for this second half. And so England able to see time out. They've still got a fair amount of time to see out though. Another eight and a bit minutes. And they're on the attack now here again. And they finish things off here. Oh, but it's uh, a cross come shot there really. Neither one thing nor the other from Catherine Bradley from Faversham. Holds her head in her hands. And we're on the way again and Pires on the attack for Guernsey. And uh, well he's complaining there that he's being uh, there's close contact from uh, Critchell, but nothing given. And uh, Fallais loses out, and England back in possession again with a ball forward that's uh, gone out of play. So Guernsey have possession with Eberl. Uh, too strong there from Eberl. Pires unable to collect. And uh, I think we're seeing some activity again on the touchline. Are we now going to see a substitution? I think we are. And so onto the park comes uh, the England number six, Mandy Walsh, returning to action. Folwell, the scorer, on the ball now. Critchell forward to O'Donnell. Back to Falwell. Switching the direction of play. O'Donnell again on the ball. Uh, 
And Paul Carr saying just there that Kelly O'Donnell of Birmingham could have had a hat-trick by now. I think she'll probably feel frustrated that she hasn't been able to find the net, but she's at least the satisfaction of knowing that her team are in front as the clock continues to tick down to six minutes remaining here for Guernsey to find an equaliser. No urgency for England and no need to have any, really. They're enjoying a lead here. Bit of uh, game management, but uh, Guernsey have nipped the ball off them. And is that given as a corner or a goal kick? I think a goal kick. The last ricochet was off the Guernsey player. He thought it bounced off him and then onto the keeper and then out, I think. Which is why he's still appealing for a corner. The referee's asking the bench <laughs> whether, whether that should be a corner or not. And now he's indicating, I think, that it is. That's not something you'd see in the Premier League, I don't think. Uh, the referee asking the opinion of people on the bench, but it's a more honest game at this level, perhaps. And uh, the ball's high there. Not well controlled. And so... Oh, well, the referee's saying that has to go back out to the... for the Guernsey corner. Obviously, he wasn't happy with the time that it was t taken the first time round. So... Guernsey with a reasonable chance here then of trying to find an equaliser. Got Galleon in the middle there waiting for it. And the ball was to him. And was that a sliding tackle coming in from Critchell? Sliding tackles, of course, not allowed in walking football. I think that was the decision. Gallion, it was, who is deemed to have been fouled. So he's over the ball now. He's got Perez there as well. Guernsey really need a bit of movement and a few options open to them. Plenty of England shirts back, of course. Time ticking on. And Perez back to Gallion. Ball into the middle, but there's no one on that other far side, and so that's going to go harmlessly out of play with uh, Steve Fallows unable to get there in time to get that one and so perhaps a bit of a wasted opportunity there not a shot on target for Guernsey and they might have to rely on a set piece because there have been very few through balls for any of the Guernsey players to chase onto in this game in fact just the one that I can recall so England again on the attack Walsh here out wide to Folwell Critchell calling for it back in defence. Folwell happy to take it into the corner. He's up a bit more time. Using their international now, here. Still waiting for more options. Well, she's not under pressure to do anything than stand there with it. So she's able to carry on. And the ball is kicked by Perez off the England player for a Guernsey goal kick. And uh, is that the final whistle after 22 minutes? Um, well, Andy Bisson's uh, call time on that game. And so England women's over 40s are victorious in this second match here on pitch two in this tournament with uh, Folwell opening the scoring for them. Natasha Folwell, the only scorer indeed. And England win this match one goal to nil.